One of the habitats we've got in Sussex, which are really rare, are these little things called gill streams, and they're these steep-sided valleys with streams flowing through them. And they're unique in their ecology because they create their own little microclimate. You can see that they're quite shaded, um, they're there for a little bit damper, and they allow things like mosses and lichens and ferns and liverworts to flourish all up their banks. Um, it's also one of the things that's protected them over the years because it's quite hard to plough or develop slopes this steep. So it means that actually a lot of these little streams are really undisturbed and have been for a long time. Um, this is a chalk gill stream, so it makes it doubly rare. Um, chalk streams are internationally rare habitats and the purity of the water flowing through this habitat with the ancientness of the woodland coming down to its sides means it's got some absolutely fantastic species living in it. So um, each month we're monitoring the stream for eight indicator species for the Riverfly uh, partnership. So uh, we're having a look to see which is what is within the stream. So we do a kick sample, which is three minutes, and then we look for the indicator species, which are gamorous, olive, case paddis, paddis, uh, various other uh, small invertebrates. So that's quite good. So we have a record um, of the stream and what we've got inside it, and uh, we send that up to the Riverfly monitoring um, website each month. About getting the water levels right because otherwise we're overflowing. There's quite a lot of water. That is a tiny, tiny mayfly. I reckon so, yes, you yeah. can see the gills at the front. Ephemera. Okay. The guys are doing this here as part of the Riverfly Monitoring Partnership. Um, it's a national initiative um, and it's basically so that conservation groups and anglers can uh, have a look at how healthy their water environments are. Um, so there's people all over the country feeding into this um, monitoring scheme and um, they're doing it here, uh, partly because it is so fantastically diverse in this stream. Since 2014 we've been restoring the stream. Um, it was used as a fish farm and we've been taking out all the infrastructure in the fish farm and naturalising it. So the last couple of years you can see a huge difference in the, the plants on the side of the stream. Uh, we've put in steps up, up and through a barrier so that the fish can get up to spawn. And we've got uh, a small population of brown trout in the stream, which is growing now that they can get up to spawn. So even this high up near the spring source of a stream in Sussex, you still find that a lot of our streams have been totally managed by man over the over time. Um, they've often been deepened, widened, straightened, um, you get, as Anne described, lots of infrastructure put in like concrete and metal and so on. And what they've done here is they've tried to help the stream renaturalize itself by starting to put in a bit more natural infrastructure. So you can see behind me, um, they've done what's called spiling, uh, just to uh, provide some vegetation along the side of the bank and to help narrow the stream. So when the stream's narrower, it flows faster it gives an attractive flow for the brown trout to come up the stream and also it helps the stream self-cleanse um, as it flows through. So you can see here where the stream's been really overwidened, something as simple as putting a log across the majority of its width it helps to actually focus the flow, narrow the stream and stop the natural processes that will eventually lead to it having its natural profile again. Um, Behind the log you can see that the silt's starting to accumulate and um, so that's providing habitat for water crowfoot and um, over time this will slowly, slowly narrow itself and become much more of an active port stream again. So because of the limestone nature of the chalk, the streams are really alkaline and that gives them a totally unique ecology so there's some really rare um, plants and all sorts of other stuff associated with chalk streams um, this one is particularly noticeable and interesting it's an encrusting lichen um, called Kilden brandia and as you can see it's scattered all the way through this stream uh, on all the rocks 
Um, chalk actually dissolves in water, um, so what you get is some of the chalk being transported in the stream. And what happens when it hits air is that it calcifies, so you get this almost kind of concrete formation um, as it comes out into the air and it encrusts things around it. It's called tufa, and these tufa deposits they almost fossilize things. Um, so, this one, for example, is probably the remains of a, a stick. Sometimes you'll find encrusted snail shells and things like that. It's just a fascinating little substance um, and quite good for discovering what you've got in your stream. So all along this chalk gill, there are all these springs popping out from the sides of the valley, which help to feed the whole of the system downstream. And you can see a little one just popping out there. So this is all wonderful as natural habitat, it's got huge ecological value, but what do chalk streams do for us? Um, do they have any natural capital value? And the answer is very definitely yes. Um, they create this fantastic little microclimate that keeps the top ends of our rivers cool, so it actually um, shields it from the impacts of global warming and climate change. Uh, with just a two degree rise in our stream temperatures, a lot of the fish wouldn't be able to breathe. So they enable a lot of our fish populations to survive. Um, all this water that's flowing straight out of the bottom of the downs is pure, clean, very cool, and it's flowing out and all the way to our seas. So this is, to some extent, helping keep our seas clean as well, even though we're right at its very source.